The time is 4.30. This is WKYT This Morning. A Central Kentucky sheriff is showing his support for an app that could help curb traffic deaths. More on the app called Lifesaver just ahead this morning. Plus, we're learning more details about a shooting in Lexington that sent two men to the hospital. We'll have the latest on that investigation coming up. An Electric County haunted house has been the target of some vandals. That story and your Kentucky forecast all coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome in. It's your Monday. We're glad you're with us and hope you had a good weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. It is October 24th. And for those of you who get the Lexington Herald Leader delivered to your house, your morning paper might be a little late this morning. We want to let you know this first thing. Workers at the paper tell us they had a press issue overnight and say everyone should have their newspaper by 9 o'clock this morning. They also have none at the store. I can tell you that. Yeah, because <laughs> so he picks one up every <laughs> morning. So there's no paper yet. Uh, so we'll <laughs> wait for that. Uh, but we do want to get to straight to weather. We had uh, a nice weekend around here. It was chilly. It's a uh, mixed bag. Yeah, things yeah. starting to warm up. Let's check in with Micah. Yeah, and what we felt on Sunday is what we're going to be feeling today, not so much Saturday. Saturday was pretty chilly. Outside. It looks pretty good though. I don't see any chance of rain for today. As you're walking out early this morning, it's nice and dry. Still on the cool side, we're at 53 degrees there in London, down in Laurel County. We'll jump toward the afternoon right around 67. Pretty pleasant conditions in store. I'll show you when we have that rain chance because it might be a while in your forecast. So I'll have that coming up in a few minutes. We'll see in a bit. Thank you, Micah. The holiday season is a month away or so. More people will be on the road, which means the number of crashes will likely go up. And so far in 2016, we've seen more traffic deaths on Kentucky roads than at this time last year. And police are trying to curb that number. An app is hoping to help that. Lifesaver has been around for more than a year. Now, a Central Kentucky sheriff is showing his support for the app. WKYT's Caitlin Sintner explains. Everyday law enforcement get calls about a reckless driver. A lot of times they're called in as either a drunk driver or a driver in the influence of some type of drug. But Woodford County Sheriff Wayne Wright says most reckless driving calls end up being something far different. And most of the time when you find contact with the driver, most of the time they're texting on their phone. It's been a deadly year so far. There have been 623 deaths on Kentucky roadways. That's 30 more than this time last year. Police are doing what they can to cut that number down, but they aren't alone. Last year, it went up 8.8 percent. .8%. First six months of this year, it's up 10 percent. It's an epidemic. James Howell is one of the brains behind an app called Lifesaver. Its sole purpose is to stop texting and driving. You download a free app, and when the car goes in motion, the GPS blocks the screen on the phone. The catch, the app can't be deleted by, let's say, a teenager without their parent being notified. It's a great tool. The app is starting to get attention from law enforcement. Sheriff Wright is standing by this app and says he just wants to see kids get home safe. It also gives, you know, hopefully comfort to not only the parent but also other motorists and drivers, knowing that young teenagers are not going to be distracted by texting or emailing, uh, talking, uh, you know, Twitter or whatever, whatever they choose to, to communicate now. In Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. The Woodford County Sheriff is taking the app in front of the Kentucky Sheriff's Association board next month. He's hoping they too will support it. We now know the names of two men who police say were shot in Lexington last week. Police say the shooting stemmed from a robbery. Police say the men were shot on Thursday night at a home on Red Mile Road. Demetrian Boaz is charged with first degree robbery. And according to court documents, Boaz and others, two others, held two people at gunpoint until someone else fired shots at the suspects. The documents go on to say that one of the victims, Robert Record, was shot once in the back on accident. The second victim, Saquon Freeman, was shot five times. Police say Freeman is still in serious condition. Record is expected to be okay. The police say the robbery happened after boys pulled out a gun on his cousin who was trying to sell him a half ounce of marijuana. No other arrests have been made in the case. In western Kentucky, state police say one man is dead after an officer involved shooting. Troopers say a woman called 911 in Metcalf County saying she had been in 
in a fight with her boyfriend and that he was outside shooting a gun in the air. When officers got to the house, troopers tell us the man, 38-year-old Kenny Tomlin, came out of the house with a rifle. Troopers say Tomlin would not put down his rifle and he fired a shot. They fired back, killing him. State police say they are still investigating. Investigators are still in the process of transferring a man charged in connection to a double murder in Laurel County to jail. Manchester police arrested Christian Roberts Saturday in Clay County. Police say they found him at an apartment. Last month, a Laurel County grand jury indicted Roberts and Bradley Lawson for the March 2015 murders of Donnie and Sharon Jackson. Deputies say the couple was shot to death in their home. Roberts is still in the Clay County Jail. He faces murder, robbery, arson, and tampering with physical evidence charges in Laurel County. The teenage daughter of Lexington native and Olympian Tyson Gay will be laid to rest today. 15-year-old Trinity Gay was shot and killed last Saturday in the parking lot of a Lexington restaurant. Police say two other vehicles were firing shots at each other and Trinity got caught in the crossfire. Over the weekend, hundreds packed Southland Christian Church in Nicholasville to say goodbye to Trinity. Her burial will be in Russellville. So far, four people have been charged in connection to the deadly shooting. We've learned that Ohio's Attorney General has approved more than $20,000 to help pay for the funerals for three of the eight family members found dead earlier this year in Pike County. Seven adults and a teenager were found near eight, in April near Pinkton, Ohio. The, Ohio. the state's Ohio Victims of Crime Compensation Program is giving $7,500 towards funeral costs for two of the young adults and the teenager. The state already paid about $7,300 to help cover other funeral costs. The murders are all still unsolved. Investigators in Southern California are trying to figure out what caused a tour bus to slam into an 18-wheeler truck early yesterday morning. The California Highway Patrol says 13 people were killed and at least 31 were injured. CBS's Chris Martinez has the latest on that investigation. A crane was needed to separate a tour bus and tractor trailer on Interstate 10 in North Palm Springs, California. The bus plowed into the back of the truck very early Sunday morning. In almost 35 years, I've never been to a crash where there's been 13 confirmed fatal accidents. So it's tough. A survivor told police most of the passengers were sleeping at the time of the crash. First responders used ladders to reach the victims because the door was inaccessible. The trailer itself entered about 15 feet into the bus. So you can see that it was a substantial impact. The bus was traveling significantly faster than the tractor trailer that it struck from behind. The bus driver died in the crash while the truck driver was injured, as were dozens of bus passengers. It seemed as though most of the victims were unrestrained and therefore were flown through the air and ended up sustaining facial trauma. The bus was heading west on I-10 back to Los Angeles from a casino near Palm Springs. Police say the 1996 bus was inspected earlier this year. And no mechanical deficiencies were noted. Federal records show the bus company involved owned one bus and had one driver. Chris Martinez, CBS News, North Palm Springs, California. And records also show the company had a satisfactory rating. The National Transportation Safety Board is sending a team to California to investigate. We have learned that three elementary school age children who were hit by an SUV at a bus stop in Louisville here in Kentucky are slowly recovering. Police say a 10 year old boy and a 9 year old girl, who are brother and sister, and an 8 year old boy were rushed to the hospital after the crash. A Louisville TV station reports that the 8 year old has a broken femur as well as a bruised lung and pancreas and a concussion. His family says he will need physical therapy and he's learning to walk with a walker right now. The driver of the SUV was also taken to the hospital. He has been charged with not having insurance or a registration. Four people are recovering after a crash in Lexington. Police say a Hyundai Santa Fe was turning onto Tates Creek Road from Old Dobbin when it was hit by an GMC Jimmy yesterday morning. Both SUVs ended up in the median of Tates Creek. One person in the Santa Fe and three in the GMC, including two children, were taken to the hospital. Police say all of them have non-life-threatening injuries. Deputies in southern Kentucky are looking for a woman wanted for passing fake money. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office posted this photo of the woman they are looking for. They say she is responsible for passing counterfeit $100 bills to two businesses. 
Deputies say the phony bills showed up in Corbin, Williamsburg, and even the Sheriff's Department. The bills passed the marker test but did not have the plastic vertical strip that runs across new bills. A Letcher County haunted house has been the target of some vandals. Organizers of Brimstone Haunted House in Whitesburg say the latest incident happened Saturday night. They say multiple people surrounded the building and started throwing large rocks and sticks, damaging boards on the windows. No one was hurt, but there were volunteers and visitors inside at the time. Each year, the haunted house donates all of its proceeds to charity. Organizers are trying to figure out why someone would want to target them. I really don't think that it was random. Uh, I think we were targeted, obviously, because this has been happening this entire season. And I think that they're just mad at the fact that we still not quit. But last night, it was a bit much. You know, with the kids inside and everything, it was, uh, there was a major line crossed. Police came out to the haunted house and they stayed there until 2 o'clock in the morning. When it closed, they are still investigating the incident. So, a mystery at the haunted house. I know, yeah. isn't that unfortunate? Uh, it is, you know, trying to have some fun, right? Yeah. Time this morning is 441 on WKYT, and it's so good to have you with us. We're just uh, getting underway here. It's fast and it's fun, and we'll see how competitors challenge their mind and bodies in an unusual bike competition in Louisville. That story coming up right after Micah's forecast. Pretty nice conditions as we head throughout the next few days, but once we hit mid and late week, we'll start to see a couple fronts roll on through that will not only give us rain chances, but much cooler conditions once again. We'll have all that coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We have 55 degrees right now in Frankfurt in the capital city. So as you're walking out early this morning, it's a little bit on the cool side, but it's not overall cold outside. We've had way cooler conditions this past weekend. This past weekend, we actually hit 30s in a couple of spots. Not everybody actually saw those or felt those, but uh, nonetheless, we're getting a little bit warmer as we go throughout the next few days. Lexington coming in at 57 degrees early this morning and staying dry. Nothing on Defender Radar Network, and really, you won't see anything for the next three days. Got to get toward your Thursday and Friday to actually see a front roll on through. So the next few hours, here's what we're going to be dealing with. We get in toward the afternoon, and we'll be seeing those temperatures right there in the mid to upper 60s. So these are normal temperatures for this time of year, and it actually doesn't feel that bad when you're in the mid to upper 60s for this time of year. Remember, it's all about perspective. And we get off toward midweek. Wednesday, I really don't see much going on on Wednesday as of right now. We'll see if the system speeds up, but as of right now, it'd be Wednesday night into Thursday that we start to see the rain move on in. And so then the front moves through on Thursday off into Friday. So there will be a bit of a change as we head towards your mid and late week. That's not the only cold front that we actually have. We actually have another one come up on the weekend. So the breakdown of this forecast is really overall, it's pretty pleasant forecast. But once we get toward Thursday, that's when we start to see some rain push on in. And like I said, if it speeds up, it may be before midnight there on Wednesday. We'll see if that changes. But as of right now, it's really after midnight going into a Thursday morning. And then on Friday, there's really not a drop of temperatures. This is mainly just a rain a cold front that's going to be moving on through. And you'll feel the difference there towards your weekend, though, because we actually have another cold front that's going to be passing on through there on Saturday off into Sunday. So temperatures will start to drop on Saturday just due to the fact there's rain out there, not so much cooler air. Cooler air rushes in on Sunday as you'll feel it there in the upper 50s. Another shot at some chilly temperatures there toward the weekend as we had it this weekend, too. Saturday was very chilly, especially during the morning hours, Saturday morning and Sunday morning. We sat there in the 30s, and it looks like as uh, we head throughout the next few days, I don't see any 30s, but nonetheless, uh, we're sitting there pretty uh, pretty nice. I mean, this is this is actually normal for this time of year, so we will take it. Not That's bad good. look. Some normal is strange for us. Yeah, it is strange because it's been so hot I know. and so cold. It's one or the other. That's the way it's been. <laughs> There's no normal in Kentucky. That's the truth. Here. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, coming up on 447 this morning, the beautiful weekend weather was good news for some people competing in an unusual bike race over in Louisville. Competitors challenge their minds and bodies in Louisville's 12th annual cyclocross competition. It's a form of bike racing that involves some off roading and obstacles. Every year, right before Halloween, hundreds attend the Storm Eva Bandman competition. It features several races that range from 20 minutes to an hour. Participants and spectators are also encouraged to wear costumes. 
So lots of fun. Look how cute. <laughs> and some dogs enjoyed it. it My mom like... and I judged a costume <laughs> contest over at the Kentucky Horse Park uh, this weekend, and it was so much fun. Well, that's cool. Lots yeah. of good events Big going on right here, now huh? in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. a ton of people. Well, I couldn't believe good. it. It was fun. <laughs> that's neat. All right, coming up next on WKYT, we have more news for you here on your Monday morning. Well, as you know, November 8th is getting closer and closer, and the presidential candidates are trying to court voters before Election Day. We're covering the campaign when we come back on WKYT this morning. Hey, welcome back, everybody, and happy Monday. We are getting closer and closer to Election Day, which is a good thing for a lot of us, I think. <laughs> the presidential candidates are making a final push now for voters. And in some uh, voters uh, have already been casting their ballots for the election. A lot of folks in Kentucky are sort of uh, jealous of that because people get the, to do that early voting. <laughs> Brooke Silva-Braga has the latest on Campaign 2016. Long lines of early voters formed in Nevada this weekend, with Democrats far outnumbering Republicans in the first day of early voting there. That's good news for Hillary Clinton, who also leads Donald Trump by 12 points in a new national poll. At a rally in North Carolina, Clinton criticized her opponent for calling the election rigged. He refused to say that he would respect the results of this election, and that is a threat. To democracy. On Face the Nation, RNC Chairman Reince Priebus defended Trump. If you lose by 200 votes in Florida, are you going to concede on election night? I'm going to reserve all options. That's right. what he's saying. But reserving options is different than saying okay, well, it's going to be stolen. That's how but I that's, say it. I understand. I mean, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's the, the problem is the difference between what you say but and what I he know, says. But I, I know where he's at on this. But at a Sunday evening rally in Florida, Trump didn't back down. It's rigged. It's broken. It's corrupt. They want me to take that back. Let me tell you, folks, it's a rigged system. A new CBS poll shows 72% of Florida Republicans believe Trump would win if not for voter fraud, though independent research from the Pew Center found little evidence of it. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. A new CBS News battleground tracker poll shows Clinton leading Trump in Florida by three points. Absentee voting is available in all Kentucky counties now. It opened up on Friday. Remember, though, you do have to have a reason to vote early in Kentucky, and you have to certify that. You can vote in person at your county clerk's office or through the mail. You can also qualify to vote for absentee in Kentucky for other reasons if you're in the military or pregnant. But lying on your absentee application is a crime. You can contact your county clerk's office if you have any questions about absentee voting. Well, the ladies packed up arena for the annual John Calipari's Women Clinic. This is the first year the clinic was held at Rupp Arena. More than a thousand women showed up yesterday during the clinic. Coach Cal surprised everyone with a $10,000 donation to the Marquee Cancer Foundation. The ladies of Big Blue Nation set a new record for the clinic with the highest attendance number ever. So what a wonderful event that is every year. <laughs> Some big blue hair there as well. Some big blue hair. Yeah. I like it. Sporting it, rocking All it. All right, good deal. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll have a look at some of the stories our news team is working on for you bright and early on this Monday morning. And we'll have another look at your morning forecast coming up. Hey, good morning. Welcome back in. It's 4.56 on WKYT this morning on your Monday, and we're glad you're with us right here. We sure are. And now it is time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. A man charged in connection to a double murder in Laurel County is waiting to be transferred to jail there. Christian Roberts is in jail in Clay County this morning in connection to the murder of a Laurel County couple. We'll have more details on the investigation into all of this coming up at the top of the hour here on WKYT this morning. And uh, we had a, as we said, chilly weekend around here, especially the early part of the day. But it is, uh, you know, it, it turned nice with some sunshine. Let's check in with Micah right now. And that's going to be the same story for today, except for those morning temperatures. By the afternoon, sitting there in the 60s, there could be a 70 degree reading here or there. But all in all, it's a pretty nice day in store. Rather cool this morning, not cold. So you're getting outside and you're walking out and about in the mid 50s, as opposed to the 30s and 40s like we had this past Saturday and Sunday mornings. Heading in toward the afternoon, we're at 67. That's a great day, especially for this time of year. A lot of sunshine to be had today and tomorrow and off towards your Wednesday. But once we hit Thursday, here come some thunderstorms that we'll talk about with another hour, actually two hours of WKYT News coming up at the top of the hour. We'll see you there.